a little bit of tef technical difficulties here. We're not quite sure if you guys can hear Zach and Samantha. So I'm going to ask right now Zach and Samantha to say hello. And those of you who know you can type questions, type just if you'll type really quick and let me know if you can hear them or not. So Zach and Samantha, if you could say hello to everyone who's on right now, that'd be great. Hello, everyone. What's up? Okay, so you guys, they just said hello, everyone. What's up? Which I could hear on my end. So if I could see a response from some of you, I can hear. Yay, wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. Ooh. All right, excuse the te technical difficulties, but we are live now. Um, first of all, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, my name is Kristen Cote Favaro, and I am the new Academy Director at our Behind the Chair Academy in Chicago. And I'm joined by Janet Barden Gordon tonight, who is our Director of Events and Education at BehindTheChair.com, and she's your color show lady. And um, we also, of course, who you're really here to um, see and hear from, are Zach um, Muscolo and Samantha Finley from Tony and Guy, and we're really excited to see them tonight. So. Um, just want to go through a couple of things quickly. You will be getting your Eploma of Participation tomorrow from this, which is fun. So you'll be getting that via email. You will also um, be hearing us talk a little bit right now about the academy that we just opened. If you don't know already, um, we opened in March. We've already had um, three sold out classes of Beth Minardi, Tracy Hughes, and today and yesterday we had the hilarious Martin Parsons doing such a phenomenal updo class. So it's a fantastic space. We love it so much. We're having a great time. Um, we encourage you to visit their website, behindthechair.com slash academy, and check out more classes. These are some of the upcoming artists we have. And I'm sure, Zach, um, you'll be joining us soon with Samantha. I'm, I'm, I've, I've got, I want a verbal commitment from you two on that one. Yes. Yep. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so those guys are coming soon. We just don't have a date set yet. And then um, tonight, all uh, Tony and Guy education is going to be 20% off. So if you love what you see tonight, there's amazing stuff. Um, and 20% off adds up, especially if you're looking at the Classic Cuts DVD and book. So um, that will be 20% off tonight. Just use the promo code TonyGuyWeb13 um, through midnight tonight at BehindTheChair.com slash shop. And um, finally, the color show, which Janet's going to tell you guys a little bit about before we get into the um, main content of our webinar here. Hi, everyone. Good evening from coast to coast. We're so happy to have you joining us this evening. And I'd love to take this moment to encourage you to visit our website, which will give you full details on the color show, behindthechair.com slash color. There you'll find a recap of the 2012 event, which was just a, a huge success. We had over 1,500 colorists from four continents, eight countries, and 49 states that gathered together in Miami for the color show uh, that we held last year. We're in beautiful Nashville in 2013 on September 8th and 9th and have just an incredible lineup of educators, the best of the best in the industry that will educate you, that will motivate you, that will inspire you to, to do better things when you return to your salons. Uh, we have testimonials on the site from attendees from last year who share with them, who will share with you what they took away from the event and why it was so spectacular. Uh, and then finally, you'll find details on our Color Connection Center, in addition to our Color Stage Theater, where you'll see our, our presenters during that two-day period. You can visit the Color Connection Center and the Color Studios where you'll be able to pick up uh, formula cards that you can take home. We have an amazing swag bag that you'll receive uh, with incredible products for you to try. And then finally, the venue that we, we searched for months to find the best place to hold this event to bring all of you together again, and that is the beautiful Gaylord Resort in Nashville, Tennessee. So please do take, you owe yourself, take a few minutes peruse the site, check out all the tabs, and finally, when you hit register, you can go to look at the ticket prices. And we have some pretty uh, amazing examples on the next slide of the ticket prices. We have a variety uh, starting with our general admission package all the way through premium, VIP, and super VIP. The important thing to realize on our tickets that we have available is that the prices will be going up May 1st. So general admission ticket 395 will become 495 after May 1st. 
and you can see the increases in those. These are this is essentially your early bird opportunity to purchase these tickets. Uh, if you click on behindthechair.com slash color, you can see all of the great things that you receive for purchasing those tickets, which includes um, a variety of course admissions, stage, color stage theater in the Connection Center, uh, lunches, drink tickets, cocktail parties, a really, really educational and fun weekend. But for a limited time, you'll also receive membership in our color community. This is a $295 value. Uh, you'll receive membership in that, which sends celebrity color formulas to your mobile phone, step-by-step, color contests, sample opportunities, a whole ton of fun. Um, so you can see we're all very passionate. I am especially passionate about this because it, it's so inspiring to see how much education you can take away from this event. So that essentially, in a nutshell, is what the color show is about. about. Um, and if you look at our presenters, you'll see someone who is actually going to be one of our upcoming webinar educators, John Simpson. Uh, he, if we go to the next uh, tab here, the upcoming webinars, we have John Simpson next Monday, April 29th, and then Anna Kentu on Monday, May 13th. So we hope you'll look at behindthechair.com slash webinars and consider our future events. Uh, I've shared enough, so turning it back over to Kristen. Okay, wonderful. Well, tonight we are so thrilled to have Zach and Samantha with us. Welcome, you two. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, participate in one of our webinars. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, thanks for uh, having us on. And uh, good evening, everyone. Or on the west side, I should say, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny because I'm still trying to get used to it myself. Everything is usually three hours earlier here, you know, because of the time difference. So. Pleasure to be here, and we have some exciting stuff to share with you on the Tony and Guy education. Hello, everyone. I'm Samantha Finley, and I'm excited to be here and uh, just working with Zach on our Tony and Guy advanced education. So what Zach and I do is work together and develop with our education team all the new concepts that you see coming out, all the advanced education for our salons and academies. Absolutely. Just uh, uh, real quick, a, a quick overview of myself, for those of you who don't know me. I've uh, been in the industry about 20 years now. Um, I'm the artistic director for Tony and Guy, so basically, like Samantha said, you know, we have a strong team. You know, um, I'm the front man. I get all the credit, but, you know, I have such a strong team behind me, and we share ideas. And basically, I overview the education on, on the company-owned uh, salons and academies, advanced work, but like I said, I have such a strong team, our team that helps me with that. I have Joseph Marzioli that heads up the, the advanced education. So we have, you know, a real, real strong core team that, uh, you know, we get our ideas together. All, All right. right, now getting to it, the actual total look tonight that um, Zach and Samantha are going to be uh, going through. So tell us what you guys are going to be teaching us tonight. All right, so what we're going to be sharing with you guys is our Here and Now collection. And we're going to be talking about the total look that comes along with that. Every time we're developing a collection, the total look is what's in mind. Our models are our clients. So we're going to talk a little bit about that with you and share the six statement techniques. That's three cuts, three colors. And we, we, start, we started changing that up um, about two years ago now. Uh, we went from doing such big elaborate collections once a year to, to breaking it down to doing two collections a year. You know, just so, uh, just for us, fashion, you know, the total look, the fashion, the clothes, the makeup, everything goes along inside of our collections. Just change so quickly that we, you know, once we're finished with one collection, we already got some new ideas for the next one. So that's what we're doing from now on is kind of splitting it up a little bit. And like Samantha said, you know, it is the complete total look for us. You know, like I was saying, that we do, we do incorporate, you know, our wardrobe. We do incorporate the cut, the color, as well as the makeup inside of all of our collections. So what we'll do is uh, just kind of go over what we're uh, going to be looking at. And today we'll be oh, – we can go, go back one more time. Would Sorry. <laughs> yes, no worries. Cut and color techniques from the Here and Now collection. This collection provides six statement techniques, asymmetry, strong fringed, and slice layers that create cuts with youthful versatility. And inside of the colors, fluid versions of ombre, block coloring, some frontal placement that complements the movement of the cut, 
and then also some important concepts to building and maintaining your brand as a hairdresser. Cool. And you're going to hear us bouncing back and forth a little bit. Um, I specialize, obviously, in cutting. Samantha obviously specializes in color. So there will be, you know, a little bit of that back and forth going on with us. And here... We have the creating the total look for your client. So the consultation. So inside of your every day with your clients and inside of how we develop our education and our collections is the consultation. So when we get these models in, you're going to see some more before and afters a little bit later. We have ideas that we want to provide inside of our collections, but we still have a model to keep in mind who is our client. And so the consultation is communication, communication, communication. And I know we can't stress that enough. Uh, and then the consultation can also make or break the end result. Absolutely. I mean, I'm a huge one on the consultation for any of you that have taken classes by us before. I mean, especially you, when you're Tony and Guy trained, uh, one of the sayings that I always say is most of the time it's not a bad haircut, it's the wrong haircut. And that takes place inside of your consultation, just getting inside of your client's head a little bit. You know, spending that little extra time when they do come see you. I know it's so easy to get an, autom an automatic pilot. And, oh, it's Mrs. Jones. Are we doing the same thing again today? And she's like, oh, yeah. You know, and, you know, not giving her that, you know, that extra little bit inside the consultation. Maybe that was the day that she was wanting to change the look. Or not really picking that client's brain a little bit. You know, going in, you know, what she does on the weekends as well as her work job, you know, and, and the versatility that she wants in her hair. So it's huge. And then even we'll get into pictures. I'm jumping a little bit ahead there. It says use pictures. You know, and uh, usually I like pictures, you know, inside of, inside of my consultations, you know, because sometimes what the client's thinking is not the exact same as you, as well as I love to pick out a lot of when we have movements and flickiness inside of our cuts, really explaining to the client how short those layers will be. Not getting excited as a younger hairdresser that they're picking that picture. I really like that. And they've got almost like one length hair and they're picking a picture with all these mad layers that's got flicky and great movement, really pinpointing out what's going on inside of that haircut. And so here you know the do's, it's like have sorry. Have the cut and color <laughs> okay. Sorry, have the cut and color placement, you know, uh, complement one another. This is huge. And so like Zach said, using pictures and then the questions, like he was saying, asking a lot of questions. So you know, the open-ended ones as well, what do you like? So they're not, they're not able to answer just yes or no. They have to actually give you some kind of description. And then, you know, what don't you like? You know, so you can find out what they didn't like about their previous cut or color or what they'd like to change with it. And then, of course, this is my favorite, you know, it's like an inch, you know, because Zach always says, you know, the hairdresser's inch. Oh, absolutely. The, uh, the hairdresser's inch is usually like a male's inch. It's usually a little larger. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just, you know, I, even just showing them what, what an inch is. That's what, exactly what I would do. And mind you, inside of Tony and Guy, this is a three-way consultation for us. So as Samantha's talking to the client, I am as well, just because we are depend departmentalized. For those of you that aren't, you're going to have to think of all of these questions and asking your client, you know, with the cut and the color. And then, of course, you know, the infamous, uh, what is red to you? Because inside of a consultation, that's always a funny one because they're saying they don't like red on them, and you're, like, asking them what red is, and they mean gold or copper, so they mean warm. So finding and digging deep, deeper on what they're actually looking at or what they're actually saying. And then, of course, we go into the don'ts. So we spoke about the do's, which really we already kind of talked about some of the don'ts. Uh, so, you know, this first don't here is, don't have the cut and color battle for the spotlight. You, there can only be one star. No, this is, this, is, this is huge. I mean, I know as hairdressers we want to express, you know, you know, our artistic ability, but I feel like, you know, if it's such a str strong, strong haircut, you know, maybe go a little bit softer on the color or vice versa. You know, what we're doing inside of our collections, you know, we, sometimes we want to break out of the box a little too much, but... We are a salon-based company, so all of our collections are very salon, you know, viable haircuts as well as color. So they have to complement each other. And then, of course, Zach spoke about this, don't ever assume. He was talking about Ms. Mrs. Jones comes in and you're assuming she wants the same thing as last time. You know, that could be the day they want to change it up. So 
that's always something to consider. Yeah, absolutely. Just reminds me of, uh, I think, eighth grade makes an ass out of you and me. Something that I've always, you know, kept. I mean, you can't, can't assume with clients. And at the end of the day, if you do and it's not what they like, it's still our fault. You know, even though we know sometimes there's some crazy clients out there, you just have to, it's almost like an insurance for yourself, the consultation, and, and really don't assume and try and get into their heads as much as you can. All right. We and, and then even that, that goes to the inch again, you know, always showing them exactly how much length is coming off. You know, I, I like to show my clients, you know, sometimes I'll turn them around, you know, especially those ones that don't want to lose much, you know, length and want to keep it long, long. I'll even turn them around and, and give them the mirror in their hand and even show them. This would be an inch, this would be two inches, or this is how much needs to come off to make it healthy. Are we looking to make it healthy today, or are we looking to just, you know, take half an inch off? But giving them that option and showing them, being a bit more visual with it, helps for me as well. Okay, okay. can we get to the cuts? The okay, look. absolutely. So, you know, once you've gone through all, all that stuff, you know, then we'll... Uh, We'll come into the first haircut. Actually, uh, was cut by myself. You can see the before and after here. Um, Miriam came in. She, you know, had relatively medium texture hair. You can see it's pretty much on the straighter side. So, you know, obviously worked excellent for what we have here. What I call the box bob. Basically, whenever I'm teaching this haircut, this haircut to me, I always say is the easiest slash hardest haircut to do. You know, inside of the breakdown, inside of, uh, you know, your sectioning patterns, they're, they're quite simplistic, but to get it perfect and even is very strong. It's very hard to get a very, very strong look. You know, obviously you have to, hopefully the ears are in the right place and they're not protruding so much. You know, have to keep all those in consideration. Looking at the hairline at the nape area, is it, is it really an active hairline? Is it going to jump up? Is it going to be able for me to keep a really strong straight line? kind of really have to look inside of, you know, obviously the client's, client's head to see if it will be suitable. Now this look combines a pre precision baseline following the jawline with a sliced inversion layer complemented by a strong fringe. Okay. So now, okay. The color. So we spoke about the cut and Zach explained, you know, the way the shape was going to work. And ombre balayage, of course, isn't going away. We're needing to learn more and more different methods, uh, techniques to suit our clients because this is something that I feel like is becoming an, a trend that isn't going away. So it's almost like your tints that come in, your highlights that come in. Ombre balayage is a, is a staple color technique, I feel. And so inside of that, every length of hair is wanting a version or variation of ombre balayage. So I thought, what better technique to put it on than a box bob? So if a client has a mid-length shape, this technique will completely work with that because it's working with more of an interior color created with curved diagonal backs and zigzag partings, and that will create a fluid end result, and it's achieved with smudging, block coloring, and paint on color techniques. Okay, guys, so there's the, uh, basically the consultation for the cut and color, and we'll move into the cut. So what you're, what you're looking at here, the four colored pitches, are basically an overview of the whole haircut. To the right, the diagram here is basically obviously showing exactly what's going on. I can kind of take you through that quickly. So slight diagonal forwards into a horseshoe, horizontal horseshoe cutting parallel to the part. So basically, you know, coming in with your first section, depending on how, how strong or how straight or box bobby you want to go will depend on your, the, how parallel or how horizontal you go inside of that first section, okay? It's very key, that first section. We don't go completely horizontal on that first section because what usually happens when we go completely horizontal on the first section, it tends to round up slightly as we come in through to the later sections. So what we do is just a slight, slight diagonal forward through there, combing that straight down. Now, this is where you have to uh, decide if you're going to cut in the comb or if you're going to cut on the skin. Now, cutting on the comb, you can utilize your comb to almost like a ruler to create a real, real straight line, but it will build up a slight bit of graduation because it's not completely on the, on the skin. Or you can go and you can obviously push the, 
the hair onto the skin and cut your line. So after you establish your guideline with your first diagonal forward section through there, you just, you're just continually working up. So your second section would be at the top of the ear. You're going to comb that straight down and you're going to cut directly onto your guideline. As you can see, the next section you will be taking another slight diagonal forward, almost horizontal as we're going through there, and then we end up in, in what we call a horseshoe. Okay. I think we can go to the next one. It's a little okay. bit of a delay before when I click it. No, 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 no worries. I mean, thanks, Zach. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. You know, it's kind of funny anyway, talking into the phone and trying to get everyone's <laughs> action. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know. I know. <laughs> so here we're um, working into the frame. So after we um, cut the sides. And let me, um, you don't have to go back. I'm going to take myself back. Keep the slide where it is. A really, really key red flag area inside of the bob is working in that side area, connecting the back to the front and compensating for that ear area. So, you know, every model, client, whoever it is, you know, usually has some sort of protrusion going on inside of that ear area. And funny enough, Miriam had, you know, some protrusion as well. So we had to work inside of the videos, little technique that we like to use. We come down with a light tension, so very light tension, maybe even switch to the wide tooth of the comb and give it a little tap right underneath the earlobe. And I go one step above and tap up above the ear as well. So putting these little taps, what it will do it is we'll bring up the hair a little bit, give it a little bit of tension. So you won't give you that. <laughs> little hiccup that I like to call through there. So you just kind of keep attention really, really light in through there, tap on both sides of the ear, and then go through and cut your line. Okay, so that will definitely help, you know, keeping that line really, really crisp and clean. And you, you'll go back through afterwards when we get into the detailing part, and you probably will have a little tag there. Better to have it and be able to cut it off, okay, afterwards. Then um, fringe cut square. Sorry, we're going to go right back to the uh, the fringe area. Sorry. Slide. Yep. Nope. There we go. Perfect. So inside of this fringe area, quite simple. You know, I'm not uh, trying to make a meal out of out of the bulb. What we did was just work a triangle section in through there. As you can see, and even in the bottom left hand corner, we um, basically just held it. You know, as as close to the forehead as possible, which equals one finger's depth, and just cut that line square. So cut that line square straight across, which actually, when you cut it square, does leave a corner, so it does slightly arc inside of that fringe, which gives you the option afterwards, once you go through and dry it, if there is any movement in the fringe area or if it gets a little sparse, usually where it gets sparse is around that hairline into the corners, that it might jump up on you. So I always start off going square first, to see after I go through and dry it afterwards, to see how that line is, it will have a slight arc if there is no movement in there. And if you're not liking that, then come back afterwards and then take those little corners off to get a really, really square fringe is what we did inside of this one. Okay. Then um, just going into the layering pattern, very, very simplistic inside the layering pattern. I was torn to even if I even wanted to do any layers through there. The reason I did was just to create just a little bit of movement inside of, uh, inside of the shape, you know, which will give her a slight bit of versatility if she wants it. But for the most part, you know, she is wearing it as a box bob, which is quite flat, quite sleek. But with that extra little bit of layer, if she wants to utilize a curl line iron or a curl stick or something to create a bit more movement, these layers will just give her just enough in there to not disturb that strong perimeter line. And basically, from the crown, laid inversion, cut short to long. So as you can see, almost like just working curved diagonal backs, working about two sections inside of there, and over-directing it up on an angle back to the original uh, center section. And that's basically just going to fall shorter to longer through there and just give a little bit of movement, like I said. All right, so moving into the color, and what I love about the last slide that Zach just spoke about, he was showing 
uh, curved diagonal back sections. And when you look here on the color slide, you can see the color um, technique, I mimic that same sectioning pattern. You're going to see a little bit of that as we work through because it really does work when they complement one another and you're utilizing the color techniques to help move the shape or, you know, add more reflection to the shape. So inside I don't of the want to interrupt, but Samantha, can I ask one question I got for Zach that I thought was interesting is yes. would you do this cut with any face shape? That's a tricky one. I mean it's it looks great on Miriam, she's a model. Yeah. Um <laughs> any you know what I mean? You know, you can't go wrong. Right. I mean someone with a rounded face shape, then I probably would would steer away from it slightly. You know, I mean so no, I wouldn't cut this on, on any every face shape. No, not at all. Okay. And a, a nice way of putting it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got it. All right. So with Miriam's color here, what we like to do, you can see at the top, the first thing is the formula. Everybody always loves to see what was done on this person just to, you know, get more formulas to use on your everyday. And so the favorite thing about the collection, I think, for the colorist is making up names to come you know, to coincide with what formula was used. This way, when people look at it from any company, they can use whatever color line to execute this technique. So they can figure out what amaretto is to them or a light sand blonde is to them. And so here we have names, of course, with the formulas that were used. And so here what we wanted to do is use clear to maintain the model's natural color. So I think that when we're working with ombre and balayage, sometimes a root shade is necessary because it helps smudge the color together and it helps the foil or mesh or whatever component that you're using to separate or isolate color, it helps it stick to it. So what we wanted to do here was work clear. So kind of encouraging that concept and I think that it's a good introduction to color for clients. Maybe they don't have color or they want to do ombre balayage but they don't want to change their root color, you're able to use clear. And so here that's what we use. And then amaretto, working more of a, a medium tone and working kind of iridescent golds and mahogany tones together to create that amaretto feel. And of course, a land, uh, light sand blonde, just something really soft and light. So it gives it a real seamless feel because I think that ombre got real aggressive. And with Miriam, what we wanted to do is show how you can combine the ombre and balayage and get a, a real diffused look. I got a question for you, Samantha, that somebody asked, what kind of paper or foil are those and what's the benefit of the kind of paper foil that you seem to be using there? That's a great question. So this here is called a mesh strip and so it's a real pliable uh, flimsy uh, paper that's used. Different companies offer them. This is a, a TG mesh. Uh, I know L'Oreal has one. Different companies create their own mesh paper and what it does is it's great for sticking on wet. So I've heard different uh, colorists describe it as wet on wet. So when you're working dimensional colors it sticks very easily as opposed to a foil. So sometimes when you're working with a foil, it's easier to get it to stay and where you want it on dry hair, and it doesn't stick as easily when you're isolating sections. So that's why we like to use a mesh for our dimensional colors. I heard Thank your you. things and sliced bread. Yeah, some, they love them. So it's fun, and once you start using them, you always want to use them. Even whenever you don't need them, people find a way to make it their classic work progressive just so they can use these papers. And I think it, it great, it's great to add, have different elements like that inside the Ooh, salon sorry. because clients are looking and they're like, oh, what's going on over there? So when people are using different things, I think that it kind of adds excitement to color services inside the salon. Great. So here you can see inside of our technique, one of our educators, uh, a couple of collections ago, came up with a paint by numbers concept, so we love to use it. So as a colorist, a lot of it's about the formulation, which you already kind of know, but you're able to just look at a picture and create that sectioning pattern and apply the color to where it's at. So here we have three different methods of application, and we have them coded inside of our techniques. And so this technique, working first, of course, going in and just creating that root shade, coming back through, and because it is a bob, we don't have to worry about any length, just going on the underneath there, and a surface coloring it. And what surface coloring is, is just having a large section of hair where we color on top of it just to kind of change the tone of it, but here we're wanting to maintain her color. And then again, you can see just taking those curved zigzag diagonal backs. And the funnest thing about this is with those curved zigzag diagonal backs, we then go in and take the point of the zigzag and split it 
and have a medium color on one and the lighter color on the other. And you can see how it creates that nice diffused feel. And we just continue that method as we work up to the head. And then that top section that's left out, that can just be left all clear. But if you wanted a more aggressive approach, you could totally apply one of the other methods through there. Great. Okay, so moving on to our second model, if it's okay with you guys. Oh, yes, yes, yes absolutely. Mia? You know, just to touch on a little bit as well that we didn't mention, I mean, in, inside of our collections, you know, every, every, every year when we come out with them, you know, like I said, we are very uh, a salon-based company, so they have to definitely coincide. Um, we don't like to exclude lengths or colors as well that I, I forgot to talk about. So you, you'll see it in almost every one of our collections. There's always a short, there's always a mid, and there's always a long. Even if that hot, hot trend for that spring or fall is short, you know, it doesn't mean your client's going to do it. So, you know, we definitely like to have that versatility and have the options for the clients to come in. As well as, we definitely want to say that we're not dictators, you know. This is our way, you know, and we're always looking to share and better the industry inside of our collections. You know, I forgot to say that in the beginning because, you know, it feels like I'm just talking into the phone telling you guys how to do it. But, you know, it's just just, just our way and, and, and we love to share. So, if you ever come to any of our classes, you'll say, you know, we're, we're all about that. Okay, the second one would be our shorter, you know, I would say more fun shape, you know, to, to, to work on than the bob. And this was cut by Myra Rodriguez, his uh, senior art team member in uh, Dallas, Texas. And uh, she worked this, uh, this short asymmetric style, utilizes block layering, vertical graduation, and disconnection to create a highly versatile look. So you can see... Um, the before and after, and that's what we definitely love, love to show as well. We, we like to show, you know, a change inside of our uh, videos. And, um, you know, this was a young girl that, you know, pretty much came in with, with almost a bob. And once again, probably on the, the, the texture was probably a fine, fine, but a lot of it. So it worked really well, you know, inside of this cut. And there is a lot going on in this cut. This is almost like I call a, our hairdresser haircut. You know, Myra is very technical. She she loves to break down cuts inside of you know um, inside of her classes and everything, and really get in there, almost like the meat and potatoes of the haircut. You know, and there's is there another way to do this haircut or any of the ones we've done? Absolutely, but this is what we always like to do every year. It's just challenging ourselves and bettering ourselves, and always looking to accomplish a look. And how do we get there? So this look, you know, as we go to the next one. I'll kind of fill you in because there's a little bit more going on than just the bob after you talk about the color. <laughs> so here, uh, Delinda, Delinda Hunter, she's another one of our senior technical educators uh, from Dallas, Texas. So Myra and her work together to create this beautiful look. And so the color, of course, like Zach was saying, you know, having a short, medium, long, it's always good to have a frontal placement technique inside your collections. Just that way, everybody, um, when they're in the salon, they can have a go-to for the short hair. So if it's short on the underneath and you just have the length on top, this technique is perfect for that. And of course, I always like to have fun with sectioning patterns. So this one has a paisley and almond-shaped section, and then we and we use um, inside of this technique, and then we layer the color. And layered slicing effect is done, which is really great. You get to see the way we work through it, and because it creates a nice movement in the shape. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So into the cut part of Mia. So I'm just going to read that first for you guys. Section horseshoe from mid-recession to above occipital. Establish block graduation weight line to fall below occipital. Work vertical graduation using diagonal forward behind the radial and diagonal backs in front of the radial. And I apologize to some of you if, if the terminology does sound a little foreign. Uh, for the most part, I'll try and explain without using as much terminology. But basically inside here, again, we have four just overviews of what's going inside of the cut. The diagram to the right is explaining a little bit more what's going on. So the first thing you're going to do is put your horseshoe in. Okay, so it's more of a horseshoe going in, dipping a little bit lower, almost, almost like taking that half moon section just above that occipital bone. Okay, so this is going to establish uh, an area to where we want to set up our disconnection. Okay, so underneath our sectioning pattern, the first thing we're going to do 
is go through and do a block graduation technique, which is a fast elimination of weight and length through there. So it's almost setting yourself up a guideline to come back in vertically. Sorry, the block rad isn't on there. So what we're going to do is start coming in on the, uh, the vertical part. So just underneath the horseshoe, the, uh, the blue diagonal forward lines, is basically where you're going to start your guideline. Okay, once you're happy with your guideline, what you're going to just do is work traveling guide, working diagonal forwards to just behind that ear area. Okay, and you are going to be cutting from shorter to longer through there. Then after you've established that back area, what you're going to do is go into that front area. Okay, now you can see the light blue is working slight diagonal back section through there. Still cut in the same manner from the shorter to longer, creating a little bit of graduation on that underneath shape. But by working diagonal backs just gives a bit more versatility of being able to wear that hair going back. As you can see in the picture, it's up off of the face. We have another picture of where it's down. This cut is very, very versatile. And just by going with the diagonal backs and diagonal forwards, it helps when you go through and you style that hair as well. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next part of that cut, which is disconnected from behind the radial, using pivoting radials, combing 90 from the section, cutting square. Utilize the crown as a guide to length for offset layering guide through the front, following the round of the head into a square line. Okay, so basically what we've done, we finished the underneath by uh, uh, working our vertical diagonal forwards. Now what we're going to do, we're going to drop the top. We're going to take a radial parting, which you can see is right at that crown area, and it usually goes to the top of the ears. But we're obviously, because of the horseshoe, it's going to stop. Okay, now what we're going to do is establish our guide to length, which is the top right-hand corner. So you're going to elevate that out 90 degrees, working from a slight shorter to longer through that, well, and, and through that first original guide, and then tr pivoting around that head. She's sorry, it's like I need a comb and scissors in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, after you've established your guideline, the, the guideline is probably the most important part because you want to decide how much disconnection you want. So you need to decide where that disconnection is going to fall on, over the underneath part, as well as what you're going to use to cut the top part square will be your guide to length. So, you know, I always, whenever I'm teaching that first initial guide, Sometimes I cut it two, three, maybe even four times. I know as I'm cutting my first section, I know it's a little too long. I was just one of those hairdressers that was a little bit more cautious. I cut it, I let it fall, I see what it's doing, I move it around, pick it back up, and then, you know, recut it again. Once you're happy with that guideline, knowing the, the, the piece from the crown area is the right length to go square through the top, and the piece falling just below the occipital or on the occipital, is enough disconnection, you're ready to move on. Once you're ready to move on, you're basically just going to work pivoting diagonal forwards around that area from just behind the radial parting. Then after the radial parting, you're just going to work through that top area and cut your, your uh, base, your perimeter, yeah, 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 yeah. your mm -hmm. uh, guideline square through the top. Sorry, the, the, uh, the thing changed. <laughs> <laughs> My oh, I'm changed. sorry. That's all right. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, your profile line, you need to cut through square. Once you've established your square profile guideline through the top, then we can move on. Okay, we can move on now. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. All good. Okay, then from the offset guide, work horizontals on one side, cutting square, and create an inversion on the other side, working from diagonal backs from the established line at natural fall, detailing the asymmetric fringe. So basically what we've done is our asymmetric profile guideline is through that top area. As you can see where the green arrows are, we are over-directing everything to that first original section, which is going to establish a longer perimeter as it falls down onto the face area. The other side, what we've done, and Myra just kind of changed it up a little bit, is just work horizontally through that area and cut square. That will fall a little bit shorter because the square line has less, less uh, distance to travel than the open direction. So just cutting it square will maintain a little bit of a corner as well, but it's going to be slightly shorter on that side. 
Okay. Once that's cut, then as you can see, everything falls down, and that's the green like triangle that's offset um, to the lip. Then you're going to go through and you're going to detail that fringe out, that asymmetric fringe. Okay. Okay. So the last part of that cut is working from horizontals into verticals from above the round. Slide cut, slide cut up the blend disconnection, over directing back the hair from the apex forward. Okay. So basically what we're doing now is technically giving it a blend as well as taking some weight out and as well as giving it loads of movement. As you can see in the diagram, bottom right is Myra doing that um, in color. The diagram just shows over directing everything 90 degrees off of the head shape and basically what you're doing is you're scooping weight out. And how much you scoop out is entirely up to you. You can scoop out a lot of weight to have that disconnection very wispy or you can barely scoop out any weight to keep it a little bit more of a heavier disconnection. And she's basically doing that all the way around that head shape. So there is a technical blend, and when she starts moving the cut and going through and styling it up, down, this just gives a lot more versatility. And this is while, while the haircut is all wet, okay? Once the haircut is dried off, that's when you've got to come back in and, and, and really detail out the fringe, detail out the layers, you know, this is where uh, I like to say, if you've ever been in one of my classes, the technical part is finished. I like to say once the hair is dry, you know, you want to throw all that diagonal forwards and all that out the window and you want to try and be as visual as possible. You really want to look at the shape. Every client is completely different. They might have more hair on one side of the head than the other. They might have a really crazy active crown. So you might have to over personalize one side of the head just to be balanced with the other side. So we don't really do any, any of that until the hair is dry. Once it's dry, that's when we come in. And Myra utilized a lot of slicing, deep point cutting, channel cutting, you know, all of that to, to create that, that texture and movement that you need inside of the cut. Okay, great. So moving cool. on to the color part of this cut. Yes. So here you can actually see that you know, interesting sectioning pattern. So we have uh, the paisley and almond, which if you think about it, what uh, Zach was just showing what Myra did, the, um, the way it was approached differently on either side, the colors work the same way, so it creates that reversible color effect. So if it's part of one way, you'll see more of one of the tones used, and if it's part of the other direction, it'll showcase more of the other color. So sometimes some people like to do this where there's, it's darker on one side and lighter on the other, so the client's able to flip it back and forth. So you can see here some of the fun colors for this, uh, a rose blonde, lavender ice, and golden pearl. So just working three different shades of blonde, one being slightly deeper than the other, and so if it's deeper than the other or darker, you have more contrast. For this, we want a little depth at the regrowth area and on the underneath, and then just real softness variation through the top. And so here, starting this out, you can see Delinda here just taking that section pattern. We always like showing the finished look. So you can see on the first uh, picture there, it's just that um, almond shape with the paisley. And what we do inside of this, after that section, just block color in the underneath all of the rose blonde tones, just to create nice depth in there. And then working through the top, you can see the whole, um, the almond shape section has all of a number two, which is the lavender ice. And the one consistent thing we have here is that the rose blonde is the regrowth everywhere. So everywhere they part it and move it, the depth color is the same all throughout. But the two, the almond, being pulled through is more of that lavender ice tone. And then on the paisley shape section, alternating the colors, but putting a lot of lightener and slicing it. So we call it layered slicing because we layer a different ratio. So we might have you know, two to three blondes to one of the other color. And this could all depend on how thick, how thin their hair is, or how much blonde you want to see. Great. And this is our last look, Isabel. Okay, going into the, uh, the longer shape. Okay, and this was cut by Lindsay Baker, which is our senior art team out here in California. And, uh, this long shape is executed with 
sliced layers to activate the natural texture and give a controlled separation. A rounded layer through the top retains length while keeping the perimeter translucent throughout. Okay, so this is a, obviously an excellent cut, as you can see even the before and after. From a very, very long, long shape, you know, we've gone in and utilized a lot of short to long layers. But, you, you know, Lindsay utilized a lot of, lot of slicing, a lot of texture inside, inside of this cut, which gives that versatility, as you can see even in the picture, to be able to even tuck it behind the ears like that. You know, was, a lot of weight was taken out. She had, she had quite a bit of hair, this model. So, you know, this is excellent for that client that does come in, wants to spice up her hair, haircut a little bit, you know, but, you know, the, the, the question that we always get is hairdressers, I don't want to lose any length. You know, which, which is huge when these long-haired clients come in, but they want to change. You know, the best one is, is they don't want any layers, or maybe two layers is, <laughs> is my favorite one. But this, this, this cut is, is, is layered, you know, throughout, and uh, gives a great texture and great movement through that. Okay. All right. So with the color here, of course, uh, altogether an ombre technique, which ombre is a graduation in color. So we thought, why not showcase one that has more of reds and coppers? And so what we do here is create, you know, crescent-shaped se sections that are overlapping one another and transition from auburn to copper to gold, which is that dark, medium light. And Laura P is one of our senior technical educators based out of California is who did this beautiful color. Okay, great. So moving on to the techniques. Okay. So inside the cut, establish the delta section from crown to the lower recession. Travel vertically, slicing short to long with the guide to length from the crown, pulling at the nape. Over direct the last section back. Okay, so basically we're going to establish our delta section, which does come from that crown area. Now, deciding on how wide that delta section is entirely up to you will decide how much disconnection you have through that top and the underneath. Okay, so basically once your, your delta is sectioned, you're going to pin the top away. And basically the top left-hand corner is Lindsay with her first section. Once again, you know, I'll beat it to death, that first section, take your time, establish that, that guideline to where you're happy. Because once again, you know, there's a lot of our haircuts, whether it is our basic or it is our advanced, it's almost like a domino effect. That guideline usually leads into the next guideline and so on. So here, she's establishing, you know, her guideline to be underneath, but thinking how she's going to layer the top as well, okay? So basically, just simply working the hair straight up, using almost like the perimeter as a guide to length as well, if the client doesn't really want to lose any of the uh, any of the uh, perimeter and just working a shorter to longer technique through there and she did use utilized um, slicing throughout once she established her guideline she basically just worked underneath that delta section over directing everything off of that section so you're basically just working a traveling guideline through there Jack we have a question about that yes. um, we have a question can you define the term delta section Delta section is, is basically where two of the, the uh, ends don't meet. So it's like a triangle, basically. It's like a really big triangle, curved kind of triangle from that crown area that goes basically forward and, and it will never meet. So it'll just get Great. bigger and bigger and bigger. Thank you. That makes sense? Well, well I they can't really understand. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I will. I'll send Mike a message to know if that makes sense to him, and I'll let you know that. <laughs> okay. <Go on. laughs> All right. So basically, yeah, working your traveling guideline to uh, just, just about that ear area, and anything from that ear forward, we're always over-directing back. That's like our security blanket, whether it's this cut or any of our basic cuts. We're usually, anytime we get towards that hairline or work around that front hairline, as you can see even in the diagram, always a red flag area. I always beat that one to death. You know, you always have to over direct back to compensate for that hairline, how it rounds up, because that's where a lot of our mistakes happen, depending on how short your shorter to longer was as well, is that you have a chance of cutting a hole. 
inside of that area, just underneath that ear. So we're always over directing back once again, just to maintain a little bit of length and a little bit of density in that front area. Okay, great. We have a lot of questions. I can't answer all of them, you guys. I'm sorry. So I will wait. We'll do some questions in the end, but that's good. A lot of interest here. Cool. All right. So work a central guide into pivoting round layers, taking the guide to length from the crown. Like I said, you know, she set herself up knowing that that crown area that she just cut will be now the connection point to work her round layer through that top area. This is where she gets a little bit you know, I would say aggressive with the cut, going round on the top will eliminate a lot of weight through there and obviously create the shortest possible layers that you can on that top area. So basically after she establishes her guide to length once again, which will be a profile guideline down the center, and when she's happy with that, once again beating it to death, making sure you're exactly happy with the guide, then we're just gonna work pivoting diagonal forwards off of that and just elevating 90 up the head shape, working a round layer through there. And once again, it was done with all slicing as well, just to create a lot of movement and just encourage that natural texture. She had great movement inside of her hair as well. So, you know, that just really releases. It's almost like two birds with one stone. I love to slice as well. And you're almost taking that length off as well as, you know, taking some weight out and giving movement. So actually three birds. <laughs> Fun. Here we have slide cut. Sorry, slide sorry. cut. Slide cut the face frame and slice a rounded perimeter. So basically, once you've done the underneath, you've done the top, you've dropped it all down. What's left? The framing around the face and the perimeter. This is an excellent um, chance for me to talk just really quickly of how some of our advanced works different, differs from our, our classics. Our classics would probably be done the complete opposite way. We would do the perimeter first, we would do the face framing, then we would do the layers. Inside of our advanced work, we like to say we're working a little bit more inside out. We don't like the length of the perimeter to dictate what we're doing. We let our layers dictate what we want our perimeter to look like. Just another way of cutting, no right or wrong way. You know, it's a little more advanced in the Tony and Guy world. You know, because you've got to be careful. Not every client wants a very translucent, wispy, you know, uh, perimeter. So this way, you know, you probably wouldn't work that shorter or longer using the guide as your perimeter. Okay? So in that front part, what we've got left is basically, uh, you know, asking the client as, as well as where your layers are falling, because it's all mapped out, and through that front area using the chin just underneath the lip area as a guide to length, and basically just slide cutting from, from the lip down to your corner. Okay, so you're going to do that on both sides. Then you're going to come back to the perimeter. As you can see in the bottom right, she comes through and even slices the perimeter as well to really accentuate and get loads of movement through that perimeter. And she just works more of a rounded baseline that will round up and, and come and join the uh, layers around that face area. Then she'll go through, dry it off. Um, once it's dried, once again, you know, it's kind of hard for me, I wish I could show you, is coming in, looking, identifying where the weight is, where those layers are sitting. And all hairdressers know, if you're taking three inches plus off, you've got to come back and personalize it. You can get away with maybe a half an inch to an inch. Once you're really changing the shape a little bit, you have to come back in. You have to soften those layers. We're a big one with with you know keeping that versatility, keeping that seamless layers where you can't really tell where the layers start or where they end. And we achieve that by going back in afterwards and deep point cutting, slicing, channel cutting, doing all our personalizing techniques that we need to, you know, to accommodate the client's hair texture. Like it might be, like I said, with, you know, the different growth patterns and all of that, you know, inside that. Okay. Color. Nice. So working with Isabel's color, what Laura did here was created three beautiful reds. So we have a rustic auburn, a vintage copper, and antique gold. So of course we're, we always see the brunette to a light blonde ombre or a dark blonde to a light blonde. So again here we wanted to see more of a, a reddish color. And so here working a different 
concept. So like Zach was saying before, you know, cutting the layers first and then going to the perimeter, what we like to do is sectioning out the layering, the shortest bit. So we do, we could see where Lindsay placed the layers in. So Laura went in and created a irregular shaped section on top to isolate those layers. Because if you think about it, it's kind of short. You don't really need to ombre that or filter color through there. It's more of the perimeter color. So section that out of the way and then utilizing that as a guide there. So again, separating the, head, the hair from front to back on the underneath for control. So you can see in that first left-hand picture up here, everything's all sectioned away, and we're starting that irregular overlapping crescent on the underneath, but we separate the front to the back for control. Because sometimes it's a lot of hair, you don't know where to start. So I always say it's really easy to be creative. It's just being smart about how you're doing it. So layers, okay, I'm going to isolate that. Okay, I'm on the underneath, isolate from front to back. Now I'm in the back, I'm going to overlap these crescents crescent shaped sections. And then you can see here, we have them all numbered as well. So going in on the first one, of course, just the darker root shade and more of the light. Because remember, ombre is a graduation of color, so we want the first perimeter section all the way around to have majority light. And then that number two, the second one, is working more of the russic auburn vintage copper into the gold, so having all three. So it's gradually getting deeper at the, as you move up, but it's lighter to the perimeter. Number three, you can see here, just the rustic and the copper. And then, of course, the top section is all the auburn. So not just ombre each set of hair, but ombre it as you're working up, so graduating that color up. And you can see just, of course, working the back, the sides, the fringe, and then the top. We did have a couple of questions. If you don't mind going back, Zach, I had numerous, so I'm just going to ask about the cut. What is slicing the perimeter? I actually had three people ask that, so I thought maybe that was worth um, interrupting for. No, no, absolutely. If we, if you don't mind going back to that diagram, there is a picture. Absolutely. Picture, so no, we, that's not a problem at all. Because, hey, guys, whoever asked the question, I'm doing it. I'm, but you can't see it. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the um, is it, oh, there is it is. It? This is it? Yep, right yeah. there. The okay. bottom right-hand colored picture, the real version of Lindsay, she's actually holding the perimeter at one finger's depth and slicing down to create texture and movement through there. You can actually, and she's standing behind the client right now, you can actually, even maybe on a shorter shape for those clients that love that little mid-length flick and it hits the shoulders and flicks up, just think, her, Lindsay now coming around that model behind the chair, utilizing her fingers as well, but coming from the underneath and slicing in an upward position. Now what that's going to do is encourage those shorter hairs to push up the longer hairs. Now what she's doing in the picture, completely opposite, slicing down, which will encourage it to split out a little bit and those shorter hairs to push down, not to flick up, just to give separation through that. And it's just another technique of, you know, breaking up that perimeter. So what she didn't go through, she didn't section it all out because it was working inside and out, from inside and out, and you know, taking the perimeter as a guideline, that was already broken up already. So she just came in with a bit more strength. Don't have to slice it. She just went with the slicing because she wanted loads and loads of movement in there. You could come all that down at natural full and point cut it. You could blunt cut it off. You know, you could do whatever you wanted inside of that. But to get maximum, you know, separation and weight um, distribution, slicing is the way to go. Okay, great. Would it also be called slide cutting ever, Zach? Have you ever heard slide of that? Slide cutting is what we – go back one more slide. Great. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, this, this helps. I feel like I'm talking to someone now. <laughs> <laughs> back um, – no, forward. Forward one more. Okay. So, the last is a bonus last. Click. Yep, one more. There you go. So those oh, green. Sorry, there's the delay. Sorry, sorry. Okay, there you go. The, uh, the green arrows that are going through her eyes and then kind of like on the chin area, and that is the bottom left-hand picture of uh, Lindsay. And basically slide cutting is going to be less aggressive, less friction inside of that, inside of that technique. So basically, you're opening your shears, letting the, the tips of your shears catch on the hair, and basically sliding that down. Not really closing the shears. You can slightly close them if you're losing a grip. The more you slightly close it, the more hair you're going to take off as well. 
but it's a pretty much a non-friction technique, an excellent technique to work around that face area, or connecting some really short crown layers to a long, long perimeter, you know, you can utilize slide cutting as well. So definitely less aggressive. Good question. Great. And everyone, just so you know, you are going to be getting copies of this tomorrow. I know a lot of you are saying that. Um, you're going to be getting copies, so you'll be able to look at this again. If you have any problems with audio too, you will be able to get that again. And we had a question about the color here. Um, they wanted to know when you're doing the ombre technique, are you back combing at all during the ombre color placement? We do not utilize a back combing method. The different things that we like to do, as you can see here, is we're using curved sections that are overlapping one another, and that's how we get the irregular feel. And we utilize the smudging. So we smudge the dark into the second color to create the transition as opposed to back combing. Okay. Great, thanks. Well, this was um, this is a great cut and color, according to everyone. Lots of compliments, lots of good feedback oh, on that one. Awesome. So we wanted to talk a little bit about, now that all the techniques are done, and we're glad that you guys like them, uh, and we love the Hair and Out Collection. It's really beautiful, and I really love how we have the distinct short, medium, long, and the versatility inside the color. And um, talking about that, what we um, offer at Tony Guy with our salons and academy, we have basic education, and then we also have advanced education, which we offer to everyone who wants to take part in it. And so we have academies that actually offer these classes. And inside of that, we kind of believe in the fact of building your brand through education. And we actually have a whole um, training that we train our educators on, on branding. Because a lot of times when you think about uh, clients, they're coming in, and they're coming in for a whole experience. So it's your image, it's the salon atmosphere, and it's actually the quality of uh, service that you're giving them. And so one of those things of building your brand is, is the education that you actually have and what you're able to give to your clients. And so here, you know, this is something that um, was, a, was one of my favorite things that I heard uh, Anthony Muscolo actually say. He was on a Tabitha Salon Takeover. And him and Bruno Mascola both went on there, and it was a group of a salon of like four girls that needed education inside of their salon. And one of the things that Anthony said is that hairdressing is about forever learning or learning forever, that concept. And so we like to think about that inside of our training, inside of our, within our own company. So when you're done with your apprenticeship program, we have intermediate, you know, education. We also have advanced ongoing education. So here, you know, are some of the concepts that we like to think about. So Continuing education beyond hair school is a must, of course. And then um, also receiving weekly, monthly, and yearly advanced education. Uh, are you challenging yourself in your weak, weaker areas? So inside of our, you know, your salon, having a, a advanced salon programs once a month or once a quarter, so finding out what the needs of your salon is or are, and having a, a, a lesson on it. So doing, oh, we all need to do updos or prom season's coming up having a class with your hairdressers on that topic, you know, and also if um, a trend comes out, having another salon program where you guys all come together and you all practice what that trend is. So just continuing to build and grow. And evaluate your work <clears throat> daily. So reflect. So every week, you know, find out what you're feeling with your clients, see what they're talking about. Um, you know, did you have any redos? What could you do better? So always reflect. You know, we, there's always room to grow. So it's a, always about better, not best. You, you want to always get better. No, I think that's the beauty of this industry. You you never stop learning. There's all there's always some some different hair texture or something that's come in that will kick your butt. You know, you get too comfortable, and you know, then it comes and it bites you in the butt. You know, so <laughs> it's just just educating yourself. You know, to me, knowledge is power. And the, the more you know, I mean, the better you're going to be. And, and continuing education, uh, I feel like is a must, you know, especially if you don't have it inside of your salon. Like Samantha was saying, that's everything that she just kind of went over. It's basically our job and our teachers that we have to implement this inside of all our salons and all of our academies. So everything that you're seeing here, is what we do inside of Tony and Guy. And, and it is really important, like I said. I mean, even I've been teaching probably about 15 years now, 
and I feel like I, I feel like I learned something from the students I'm teaching, or even when I'm teaching it, I, I, I figure something else out that I that I didn't know before. And I've done that haircut what 50 times. I mean, it, it's crazy how how it can pop up like that. And so here, you know, as we're saying, it's important. The next slide actually talks a little bit about how you can make that happen and right. how we make that happen. And, um, you know, one of the things that we do and we still do is um, weekly model night program. So this is something that we offer, but a lot of salons out there, this is what they do to train their apprentices. So, you know, they're, they're working and they're helping you make the salon look nice. They're helping you, you know, get your clients in and out. But it's always good to give back to your apprentices and have a weekly model night with them. And so this is great in the beginning of your career because it's weekly. It's crucial. So providing yourself a solid foundation will help you grow now and throughout your hairdressing career. Yeah, this is, I mean, to us, it's something that we've been doing as a company for almost 50 plus years, but I could not imagine not having that. You know, like Samantha said, you, you, you come out of hair school and, you know, depending on what hair school you, you go to, you obviously have a little bit more knowledge than other hair schools, but even coming out of ours, you know, you're well trained, but it's, they're tough. There's a lot of haircuts that you have to learn, and a lot of different clients that come in, picky ones, nice ones, there's, there's all kinds, and we go over that inside of our model night. There's certain, you know, curriculum they have to go through to get onto the floor and then obviously get to the next level in, inside of our model nights, but every week we're always, you know, you know touching up on, on different theories, you know, you know, and they can discuss with us if they, you know, had a problem with a different client or if they're just learning and we're teaching them about different, different techniques inside of clients, you know, inside of their hair, their textures, everything. But it's, it's huge. Our, our, our model night program is awesome. And, I mean, if you don't have one in, we would love to help you. <laughs> I mean, it, it, to me, it, it has to be ongoing education constantly. And so once you're, you know, once you're on the floor and you're taking clients on a regular basis, that's, you're not done. You know, it's always, you know, just like you guys are all logged on now or you're taking advanced classes, yep. it's important, you know, to take advanced classes even when you're on the floor, even after five years, ten years. And so, you know, advanced classes come in the, the shape of uh, demonstrations and hands-on, uh, cut and color breakdowns and hands-on. The hands-on is important. So, yes, you know, logging into on a webinar and listening, but then going and executing mm -hmm. and doing this in a hands-on form so you don't lose it. So you remember it. Yeah, even in the, 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 that first part, demonstration and hands-on. The demonstrations to me is like eye candy, you know, and, and it is educational. We are very visual, but we are hands-on people as well. So you get best of, best of both worlds there, that you get to see us transform a haircut, you know, right there in front of you. But then the hands-on part, you know, that, that's where all the questions happen. That's where, you know, I like to say the mistakes happen. If the mistakes aren't happening, then you're not trying. You're not trying to get out of your comfort zone, get out of your box. You know, that, and the hands-on part, you know, is, is, is like your time to really get, you know, get in there and work on what you're not good at or work on what we feel like is the latest collection, you know, and what we're working on. And then, you know, maybe getting, receiving some one-on-one -on -one training. You know, sometimes, you know, you're in a, in a, a huge class, you might want some more one-on-one -on -one attention. If you're not able to take classes very often, the one time that you get to, you might want all the attention to be on you. And then, of course, you know, you could have someone come in and teach your whole staff. Yep. You know, or sometimes you want to get away and get out of your environment. It's all, all these different advanced classes or concepts are all based on the type of learner that you are or your staff is if you're a salon owner. Absolutely. All right, great, wonderful. We've got a couple of questions that people, um, oh, sorry, Fritz, we're going to talk about you guys have a great deal going on right now on your advanced education, speaking of. Yeah, definitely. So after um, all those concepts and things that we're suggesting that you do in your salon or that you take part in, we actually offer them. And so we wanted to share with you guys right now, we have 50% off all of our July advanced class classes. And that means the ones that are on the calendar scheduled, which I have the dates here. So the Dallas Academy is offering two for July. Our Modern Classic Cuts, which is our most popular. And our teaching technique, which usually the, the Modern Classics is a prerequisite for the teaching technique. So if you want to get an educator trained, that's a, tech, that's a class to take. Uh, and then in South Coast Graduation Skills. So these are all three some of our best classes, and they're being offered at 50% off 
for July, and the promo code is listed there. And then also here, if you wanted a one-on-one -on -one training booked, if you book it in July or for July, you get 50% off. And that's great, too, because, of course, that's a little bit you know, more expensive than the other courses, but it's 50% off. So if you wanted a one-on-one, -on -one, July is the time to do it. And then, of course, in-salon training. So if you want someone to come to your salon and teach your staff, you get 50% off in July. So it is a great deal. It's a summer special. Very good. I mean, like Samantha said, it, it depends on your personality, how you like to be taught. You know, you want to get out of your shop. You want us to come to you. You know, you come to our academy. You know, there's, there's all different ways of learning and getting out of your comfort zone. I can give you this, though. None of our educators are big heads. There's no egos here. You know, we just love, you know, we love to have fun. We love what we do. And, you know, like I said, and you'll hear us say it over and over again, we're just always looking to better the industry. You know, my family's been doing it for 50 plus years and I'm trying to continue the legacy. And there's no secrets, you know. We, we love sharing all of our secrets. So whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or you come to our classes, that modern classics, you know, don't let the classics fool you. To me, that's one of the hardest classes I teach because that's the backbone of everything we do. Everything we went over today doesn't happen unless you know our modern classics. It's our verbiage. It's how we hold the hair. You know, you'll understand the four-point cutting system, everything we do to achieve that cut. Any picture you see that's done by Tony and Guy has one of those breakdowns done for it. So that's, you know, you'll, you'll learn how to break down the shape as well. And one other quick question before we move on to these direct questions. Can you quickly tell us where in Dallas is your academy and also South Coast Plaza? Our viewers may not know what does South Coast Plaza mean in what city? All right. So the Dallas Academy is located, uh, it's North Dallas. It's uh, near our, the Dallas Tollway. Currently, it's in uh, Carrollton, Texas but it's going to be moving soon, but not far away. <laughs> We're going to get a new facility, so it'll be really exciting. And then and South, the South Coast? Coast? Orange County. Orange County. Okay. Basically, uh, it's right across the way from the... What's that mall? South Coast Plaza. It's South like, I think it's like number much one opposite, or two yeah. shopping center in the world, so it's a great location. It's beautiful. And, yeah. and they can find the specifics on your website as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You go to visit us online at TonyGuy.com. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right, a couple of questions that we um, have here. What is the best tip, cut, and color that you apply to every client? If you could tell these young hairstylists or veteran hairstylists out there, what, if you could tell them one thing, what tip would you give them back as far as cutting and Samantha as far as coloring? Ooh, one tip. Um, well, I remember in the beginning of my career, I was always a nervous wreck, and I think my dad told me, is to do what you're best at in the beginning, to build your mm -hmm. confidence. So not trying to go too much out of your box, even though that's what we're always trying to teach, but that's in our class environment on mannequins. Mm -hmm. If it's a brand new client, uh, yeah, just knowing what you really do well. And, you know, just like I said, consultation to me is still just huge, just picking their brain and just give them a bit of customer service. A, a bit of extra TLC goes a long, long way. And if you say an inch, please, an inch. I have so many clients that have come to me before that just want half an inch off, and they said their hairdresser it took like two or three. So just, you know, listening to the client, I think, is huge. Yeah, definitely the same for color. Uh, one of my favorite things that I like to do for consultations is uh, sitting down or standing in front of the client. I don't like talking to them through the mirror. So I think that that automatically like brings you down to their level if you're sitting at their level facing them or if you don't have a chair or a stool nearby, you know, moving their chair around or standing in front of them just so you can really get that communication. And for me, I was just having this conversation this morning with one of our other educators. I love to talk with them first, get a feeling of what certain colors are to them before I bring out the color swatch book. I feel like swatch book is Pandora's box, and I feel like having the conversation first, and that way when you go to the color book, then you can kind of point to some of the things that they spoke about, rather than starting back at square one, because they're so overwhelmed with all the swatches, so that's my tip. That's great. What is the best way to ensure that there will not be a harsh line of demarcation in your ombre technique? We had a ton of questions about ombre here tonight. I love, I loved that this was a question on there, so I, 
I knew it was coming because I saw it earlier and didn't have to spend too much time on it within each technique. If you can see inside of the colors, the choices in all three techniques done, three colors, having a dark, medium, and light. Even if you want to just really see really dark and really light, that harsh line of demarcation is the idea of it's not being diffused properly. And that medium color is what helps diffuse that for you. I love using on the really dark regrowth and the really light ends, even if you're using like a semi demite root and lightener on the ends, having a high lift tint for the medium helps smudge that. Because color and lightener don't smudge, you know, very well together. That's why people like to do the back combing method. But even then, sometimes you still see it. So we prefer to use technique in a third color to help transition and give a more fluid feel. And you know what? Before we move on, can I add on to that? Please. <laughs> yeah, because um, I love being able to go back in and slice, take weight out of certain color that will help you know, break up that line. If that line is a little bit too hard and you've already put the color on, you're into your cut and you dried it and you see it there, let's not forget, you can go back in and you can personalize and soften that line up tremendously as well by just cutting the hair. Three-way consultation. Three-way consultation. <laughs> How about what advice is there to create bangs for salon clients looking for something no fuss for curly hair? I love this question, being a curly hair girl myself. That is a very tricky one for, uh, for curly hair. What advice is there to create bangs for sound clients looking for something? How about don't get bangs? Daddy, you know <laughs> what, man? You, you just took the joke right out of my mouth. It, it's, it's a really hard one to explain without seeing the client what kind of curly hair do they blow dry it straight? I mean, you've got to ask all these questions. Have you ever worn it before with, with that curly texture? Are you going to wear it curly? Are you going to wear it straight? Just think, if they are going to wear it curly, then wide tooth, like the lightest tension you could possibly put on it, and cut your fringe. We do cut curly fringes, absolutely. It just, it, that one really depends on the texture and density and, I mean, face shape. I mean, everything starts to roll into it. Right. But, um, no, I mean, I wouldn't shy away from it. I'd just be, you know, really uh, secure with what you're doing and, and pick their brain a little bit more before you do it. Yeah, you saw my, my, my picture. I wanted them whenever I was little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom gave it to me, and now I will never have them again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I have bangs, but I have curly hair. But it's all, I mean, it's, it's an extra 10 minutes a day, really, truly. It, really and it excited. really depends on your, on, on your curl texture as well. Because i got really curly hair as well, but I can, as you can see, even in my picture, you know, with some wax, I can pull it out. Uh -huh. Today I look like a mad scientist. <laughs> I mean, but it all depends, you know, on that texture and how it's going to spring up and how they're wearing it. Okay, how about what are your what are your tips for increasing speed but maintaining great work when coloring? Nice, I like that one. Inside of um inside of our tech, uh, collections, we like to come up with speed techniques. So I think that when you're working with highlights, I think that um you're gonna get creative with uh, where you take shortcuts. So uh, one of my teachers always said you can cheat everywhere but the hairline and the profile. So if you are doing a full-blown half head and you're having to get them in, you know, you can space them out everywhere else except for the hairline. You want to pack the hairline in and you want to pack the parting in, but you can spread them out everywhere else. And then picking the sectioning pattern for the focal point. So if they have a fringe, make sure you detail the fringe and the, and the face frame. You're just getting creative with triangles and rectangles where you're going to see the color. And, um, and then also when you're working with a tint with highlights, getting that tint in everywhere and then highlighting at the, the same time. That's why we love working dimensional techniques inside of our collections because you can get these done in 30, 45 minutes and you're on to the next client. But remember, whether it's cut or color, know the rules before you can break the Definitely. rules. <laughs> you know, go the long Good way advice. around before you take those shortcuts. Good advice. Absolutely. How about, how about on tricky growth patterns in neck area and front hairline, how do you work with them when cutting? Very carefully. Now, <laughs> at the best advice, spot them before you go in and cut it. Okay? Now, if that hairline, I know exactly what, uh, is that Kelly? 
uh, Kelly, is probably thinking especially the ones in those airlines, the ones that kind of grow up and in, and some of them go like halfway up the neck. You've got to be really, really cautious with those, you know, identifying it first, talking to the client, and just telling her that we might have to leave it a little bit longer or go a lot shorter to compensate for that, for that crazy, crazy hairline. The, the, the one inside the front hairline, that will probably determine if you're going to give her fringe or not. If she's got a crazy hairline or a cowlick going on in that front hairline, I usually will talk them out of doing any sort of short kind of choppy fringe that will might, you know, stick up once you take weight out of that hairline. Great. And what types of cut and color techniques are most in trend for this summer? I feel like the right up there, the middle one, the the Mia has nailed everything. I mean, whether it's on a girl or a guy, you know, it's I have a variation of what the Mia is. You know, so and it's not going anywhere right now. The men, you know, are all over that still. And it's just another variation of our Tony and Guy disconnected slash undercut. And I feel like I'm still seeing a little bit more of it. The the bulb is is timeless. I felt like, you know, it, it always sneaks back in, you know, into fashion, in and out of fashion. But I, I feel like the Mia uh, a lot of the girls, you know, even coming back to that little bit of that pompadour look as well, it's come back again. Okay, great. Um, uh, you guys, we're trying to conclude here close to 7.30, even though we got started a little bit late. Just want to send you all to our community website, which we just launched a couple of months ago, which is fantastic. Um, I know we got so many members so quickly, and we are just seeing so much amazing work from Hair stylist, real hair stylist behind the chair, like you guys, just sending us in these amazing things. Um, so please go and join that Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, of course. Um, and then on demand education, we've got it all over. We've got webinars, we've got DVDs, videos, everything. So go to our website, go to our store, and see what you can have. We've always got great bundles um, on special. Um, so, yeah, 50, there are 50 other webinars there right now from um, everyone. So we are just really, really um, thrilled to be able to share this with us tonight. And I apologize to all of you for our technical difficulties in the beginning. And thank you for bearing with us. This is my first webinar. And um, so we've got a bunch of newbies here tonight, but we will um, improve as we go on here. And I just want to say a really big thank you to Zach and Samantha. You guys were fantastic. And um, it is frustrating. I know a lot of you have said it's hard when you can't actually see them cutting hair. I know. I know that's so hard. And, and that's why, and some of you did ask, can Tony and Guy, will they come to any salon? And, and they will. You can go. You guys can, you can get these people to come to any salon no matter where you are and you're in the middle of, you know, Nebraska, they'll, they'll come to you. So um, you could definitely reach out to them and see them. And you could come to Chicago, too, because it's great and centrally located when they come to our academy, which is just one. They've got a ton more classes, so you find the closest one to you. But um, take advantage of that 50% off for uh, July. That's a great yeah. deal. Red Hot great Summer deal. Special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So um, I guess that's it. Uh, so thank you so much for everyone. We really appreciate it. You guys are going to be getting a copy of this via email tomorrow or Wednesday. And don't forget um, that the uh, Tony the Tony and Guy um, merchandise is on special through midnight. So make sure you get that as well. If you're interested, um, go check out our store. And um, just thank you very much. We really appreciate all you coming in and tuning in tonight. And um, just want to say good night and have a great evening. And thanks for your time. Uh, absolutely. Thanks for having us. And thank it was you. a pleasure to be on. And thank you for everyone that uh, uh, was listening to us tonight and always looking to better their education as well as better their industry. Thank you, guys. Thank you.